classically French trained pastry chef, meaning that I've worked under some of the best pastry chefs, French pastry chefs from around the world, being Francois Payard or, or stints with Pierre Hermé and Daniel Boulud and Jean George. So my foundation is very strong in French technique, but yet I am American and I'm able to apply American ideals and American creativity to these classic foundations. So it allows me to really broaden my, my repertoire. When I approach my menus, I don't repeat from year to year, and I really focus on, okay, well, say strawberries. What can I do to this strawberry to make it better? Like, it's already such an amazing thing that, so, we, so say a strawberry ice cream, we take the best of the best strawberries and, and like use an instrument called a Paco Jet where I shave the strawberries into an ice cream, and it's just perfect, perfect flavor, perfect texture, and it's like, nothing else needs to be done to it. Sometimes we want to manipulate things a little more. Sometimes they need to be cooked. You know, but for the most part, we, we just try to take those flavors and just put them on pedestals. John George, I'm lucky enough, travels around the world at all times, so he's constantly bringing me back new spices and things. So recently he brought me back a bunch of different spices, and I'm really kind of getting into these roots and, and barks, like sarsaparilla and birch. So I've just incorporated uh, a, a beautiful birch flavor into a, a, a carbonated fresh strawberry soda that I made and something for the fall menu now I'm doing a, an apple cider, a fresh apple cider soda with a sarsaparilla froth. It's, it's just these, 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 these woodsy natural earthy flavors really go well with, with, with a lot of the fruits and chocolates that I've been working with so I'm excited to, to really go down that avenue right now. We're in the market two times a week with our driver and we buy for all seven of our restaurants. So I'll find great, you know, great strawberries, these little tri-star strawberries that only grow upstate New York, you know. We go, we find all these local peaches and nectarines and stone fruits. And right now it's coming into fall and it's really exciting for me because I love Concord grapes. I'm from upstate New York and it's really like a northeastern thing and it's such a pronounced special flavor that I, I wait all year just to get these, these grapes. And then going into winter, you know, we have our squashes and pumpkins. You know, dead of winter is a little bit hard and that's where we tend to use a lot of citrus. And then into spring, you know, the fava beans start and all the early stuff like the ramps and it's, it's exciting. You know, when you start seeing the ramps and everything, you know, you know, spring is here and, and we're going to start getting some great products. So. When I travel, I always look to learn something. I always try to see like, well, how do they do something that I do similar? Like, how do they do it and why is it different? Why is it better or worse than it is? And I always try to pull a component from it and say, okay, well, how can I apply that to what I do? How would that make my food better? How would that make my style better? So I definitely approach everything as, as, a, as a learning experience for me. Like right now, there's a huge revolution in Spain. You know, Spain's really leading the way as far as, as, as taste makers, as flavor makers, as changing the way we think about how to compose a dish, how to cook, why we cook, you know, the spiritual side of it. Places like Mugaritz in Spain, places like El Bui, you know, in Spain as well, you know, Pierre Gagnier in France. You know, there's lots of, of amazing, amazing chefs going on, you know, and then there's people in America like, like Wiley Dufresne and WD50. You know, my friend Sam Mason, you know, these guys all are starting to think in different directions and really educating fellow chefs as well as the diners about what's what's going on like why does something have to be this way why does it why does a tomato have to be in a salad or why does asparagus you know have to be that way it's just it's not that way it's just teaching people that food is so versatile you know like flavors are so versatile and we're really learning a lot about about food for me when i'm cooking whether it's in my kitchen or at home you know i always look for just strong flavors. I don't, I don't like things to be muddled. I don't like to be so many things on a plate that I don't know who the star is. There should be something on a plate and then maybe a couple of companies that will help enhance or show contrast to that, that dominant primary flavor. So for me, it's not about what's better, simple, or complicated. It's about what's balanced. You know, for me, a great dessert, a great dish is one that's balanced with temperature, texture, something sweet, something sour, something you know, bitter, something salty, whatever, whatever it is, it's got to appeal to all the senses. But at the same time, it has to make sense, it has to pop. The most important thing is a flavor, a dish has to pop. It has to make sense, it has to excite your palate.